So I have another quick little gear review video here to do today. And uh, this is the Celestron Off-Axis Guider. And unlike other Off-Axis Guiders, it's massive. The prism inside it is massive. And it's just what you need if you're gonna image with a full frame camera. It is what you're gonna need if you're gonna image with a full frame camera. Even a Micro Four Thirds, I would consider going with this over others because the vignetting will be a lot less. I'm gonna show you some raw photos right now, and you can see here the vignetting that occurs. It's not a lot, and it's pretty good. Now, of course, the camera is in line with that prism to ensure that it's in the optimal location. If you turn the camera at 45 degree angle, you are going to lose a corner. So keep that in mind when you're placing your system. The other thing I do want to mention about this setup is that it is large, which obviously it is. It's also quite heavy and you need to make sure that you attach it to a scope that has a lot of back focus because this takes up a lot of space. If I want to put a filter wheel into this image train with the Nikon, I only have this much space left over in the entire image train. Now, of course, if I'm using filters, I really should be using a mono camera, in which case I can purchase a mono camera with a much shorter back focus distance than Nikon requires, but just something to keep in mind, it is big, so if you do have a lot of things in your image train, you might run out of back focus distance. It's got a really nice way of uh, changing the focus for the guide camera. Basically, it just rotates, it's really nice, but I'm not changing it right now, because, yeah, it's set up already and I'm not gonna go and spend an hour trying to get back into focus. Despite it's easy, this camera through an F10 scope is not the easiest thing to get into focus. So this is the setup. Um, it's basically set up there. The camera would be placed here. That's a no brainer. It just happens to be snowing right now. And there's no point in me showing you the camera attached. It literally looks like a camera attached on the back. Um, if you wanted to put a filter wheel in, you wanna put it behind the mirror, if you put it in front of the mirror, then it blocks the guide camera and that's not gonna work at all. So something to keep in mind. And I've been using it, I'll post a couple photos. Basically, yeah, it's a really nice setup and while it is more expensive, it's more expensive because it's just physically larger. And in this case, buying a larger one is basically future-proofing your setup, which is always good because you never wanna have to buy something twice. So there you go. All right, I'm done now. It's like the truth coming on me. So that's my review of the OAG Off-Axis Guider. Please consider giving me a like, and if you want to see more astrophotography content, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps me to know that people are enjoying this content and want more. And until then, clear skies, and thanks for watching. And it is literally snowing in A. What? All right, well, I'm gonna close this up before I get snow in my imaging drain. Roll credits.